Good day, everyone. I just want to greet us all this another week. We just want to give, give God thanks for his goodness and give him thanks for his mercies toward us. As we come again another week for our weekly edition of our devotions, we can acknowledge that indeed God has been good to us. He has been faithful. He has been true. He remains committed and therefore, we as believers, as people of God, God requires that each one of us also be committed to him, be true to him, and be faithful in everything that we do. So for today, I just want to encourage us to be sincere in our service to God. Renew our commitment or make a recommitment to our Lord. As the scripture says, all that my steps, Lord, in your words, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead unto thee thy own understanding. But in all that thy ways acknowledge him. What is more important is that we are to acknowledge God in everything that we do and he promise that he will guide our paths, he will guide our footsteps. If we really want his blessings or to experience him fully in our lives, we ought to have a relationship with him. And not just in a relationship with him, but to be faithful, to be true, to be committed to him because he is the faithful God. So there's a little song by Neil Young. Comes a time when you are drifting. Comes a time when you settle down. Comes a time light feelings lifted and lift that baby right up off the ground. Comes a time is a song that speaks of marking significant shifts in time, times of renewal in our lives. There have come times of renewal in our Christian journey and our walk with God. Perhaps as we graduated from high school or college, we are recognizing some sort of assembly that a responsibility has been placed upon us. So we make transition. So you move from one part of your life to another. For example, you left college, you realize that you are now going into the work world. There are some responsibilities that you are to prepare yourself from. Your transition to high school, whatever transition you make, you realize that there are some responsibilities, there are some challenges that this transition will come with. In the very same way, in the Bible, there comes a time for marking such movements with God himself. Those times are referred to in scripture as covenant renewal. Times when God's people recognize God's movement among them and pass to renew the covenant of grace with him. Pass to recommit ourselves and set spiritual goals. And like the words of the Apostle Paul, I press towards the mark for the eye calling of God in Christ Jesus. Understand that as believers, our daily goal our daily commitment should be drawn closer to the Lord. So I just want to give us some ways that we can renew our commitment or our covenant with God. And the first thing is to get sincere. Get sincere with your relationship, with your walk with God. Sincerity means what is complete, entirely in accord with truth and fact. Be truthful and firm in your convictions of God's word. Be pure, get rid of sin, and walk in the ways that is pleasing and acceptable to God. Do that which is pleasing to him. Stand by your faith, no matter the odds, no matter what the challenges are. Remain true to God. Maintain your integrity. Would you call the relationship with the Lord complete? Would you say that you are so firm in a relationship with the Lord that nothing can even move your foundation? Look at what Joshua in the Old Testament. Joshua says, if you are going to live godly, you are going to have to be sincere in a service. Some people back and forth, they serve God one day and serve self the next. Only on worship days we serve God, but that is not a sincere relationship with him. One of the things you need to choose this day is to quit playing around and be sincere with the Lord and sincerely live for him. 
we must persist. And sometimes we must make, take, make our professional faith seriously. It was when the people insist, no, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua affirmed the covenant with them. You know your sincerity by your purity, how you live. Here's what Joshua told the people. Put away the gods which your father served. Get the gods out of your life. And they are not completely kept themselves away from the eating and their ways. Just like when believers refuse to give up their worldly things and ways. Get sin out of your life. Live the life that God expects of us to live. And be sincere with him. 2 Timothy 2 verse 21. If anyone purifies himself from these things, he will be a special instrument set apart, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. So it means that if we want to be an instrument for God, if we want to be called a people of God, we have to be sincere. We have to put away sin. Secondly, if you want a radical, if you want to renew the covenant with the Lord, make the choice to serve the Lord. There's no going back. There's one song say, I won't turn back. I won't go back to the way that I used to be. The choice has been made to live godly. You must continue to serve God and it's not possible to serve the world and, them, and the Lord. Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. This idea eight one and of the other. They cannot serve both God and mama. They cannot serve God and serve in the world at the same time. So you have to take your challenge seriously. Joshua 24, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the cards of their father. Serve beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. Quit worrying about what others are not doing and live for God, get in the game, make the choice between good and evil, and stick with it. Make that decision to serve God and allow him to direct your part. And the final thing is to surrender. To surrender means to heal power and control to another. Surrender happens when a person gives up all their rights and claims to be in control. What does that mean to us as Christians? Romans 12 verse 1 puts it clear, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Heal all that you have a desire to God and let the Holy Spirit have a monopoly on your life. Do not turn back from your choice to get saved and live for the Lord. Therefore, there is no ifs in living God. They choose you this day and choose right. To surrender to your choice, you must give up. If you desire to live godly, you must give up. Give up the idea that you know what is best for you, realizing that God knows what is best for you. Give up the idea of living a life as you wish and live as God wish. Understand that God calls us to quit the things of this world. Wake up each and live every moment as God requires. Surrender in his part of Paul's I die daily. Paul says that I that live, but it's Christ who lives within me. Quit resisting the work of the Holy Spirit. There's no surrender as long as you say within the heart, God, do you know what would, what you would mean to my life? Are you fully surrendered to God? When you fail to surrender, whether you like it or not, you are playing games. It's only son and we are playing games at the foot of the cross. So we all have a commitment to make a vow before the Lord. In Joshua 24, verse 16, and the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord, but it's the only God. They took an oath before the Lord. Joshua told him in verse 9, you are not able. Joshua was not trying to discourage them, but to make the record, it was all a sovereign grace. Nothing in my hands I bring, holy to the cross I cling. So it is not by our works, but it's by the grace of God. In solemn vows, we are not vowing to our ability to keep the law, but committing by faith, to God's faithfulness to keep the covenant. In Jesus, he did. Our response is a response of a vow to grace. The let grace of his work in our lives and moves us to obedience and love for each other. It's the, only by the Holy Spirit that we're able to live this life that God requires of us as believers. Before then, there can be a true covenant renewal in our lives. We must make a commitment to the Lord. We need to be constantly recalling our first love and live the way that God would have us to do. So today I want to encourage you, be sincere. 
choose to serve the Lord and surrender wholeheartedly to our God. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, we just want to give you thanks for this another week. We want to give you thanks for your love, for your goodness. Lord God, as we face this another week, Lord God, with these challenges, you know all about tomorrow. And so God will leave this day, will leave this week in your hands, God. We pray you that you minister to us every father. We ask Almighty God to help us to be sincere, help us every father to choose you in everything we do and to surrender our whole being to you, mighty God. We present ourselves into your hands, God. Bless every participant, every era right now. Guide them, God, and protect them. Watch over their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your name be glorified. Bless us all, God Almighty. You know the challenges. You know the situations, God. We'll leave them in your hands. If any have not yet accept your mighty God, bring conviction and have your own sweet. Help us as believers to be firm, to be true. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for tuning in to this another week's edition. We we'll look forward to seeing you again. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>